Water, How Terrestrial Animals Survive on Land, a video lecture project by Melissa Farrell and Alexandra Campbell. Before we begin discussing the specifics of how terrestrial animals regulate water, we would like to remind you all that life on Earth began in water. Even today, water makes up about 70% of our planet. The transition from water to land was a major evolutionary step that has resulted in the success of many species of terrestrial animals. Life first made the transition from freshwater to saltwater, where organisms had to adapt mechanisms for osmoregulation. regulation. This happened yet again when life moved on to land. For example, terrestrial animals had to evolve a mechanism for inducing thirst. Even among terrestrial animals, there are many differences on how water is regulated, depending on the type of animal and the climate in which they live. One type of extreme environment is the tundra. Tundras are characterized by very low amounts of precipitation, and the animals that live there must be adapted to avoid desiccation. For example, tundra birds must expend extra energy in order to consume water in the winter, as it is in the form of ice, and they must melt it. The metabolic cost of melting ice is about 18% of total estimated daily energy expenditure. Another way animals adapt to avoid desiccation is through hibernation. Similarly, deserts are also characterized by low precipitation. One way that water retention is regulated in mammals can be seen in the camel, as they have a slow rate of water loss compared to other animals and are able to withstand dehydration of up to 30%, compared to 10% for all other mammals. Another way that many desert animals avoid evaporative water loss is by burrowing in order to create a cooler habitat. However, not all animals have to accommodate for low environmental water levels. For example, animals living in tropical rainforests experience high amounts of precipitation. Some biomes experience varying amounts of precipitation throughout the year, such as the savanna, where seasons are regulated by rainfall. Savannas have very low amounts of precipitation in the summer and high amounts in the winter months. In order to compensate for the variation in precipitation, the biomass of large mammals decreases the further away they are from water sources, and water-dependent species will migrate based on seasonal availability of water. One way that terrestrial animals adapt to regulate water levels is by physiological adaptations. Many of the ways that terrestrial animals are adapted to osmoregulate physiologically are also used by aquatic species. This includes the use of the kidneys, which are regulated by hormones, including the antidiuretic hormone. One of the unique ways that terrestrial animals are physiologically adapted to control water levels is the camel that has been found to have longer loops of Henle so that more water can be reabsorbed into the bloodstream. Here we have an original illustration of a nephron, the smallest unit of the kidney, where you can find the loop of Henle. Also, marine reptiles, including birds, possess nasal salt glands, allowing them to consume salt water and excrete the excess amounts of salt while retaining the water. We drew a representation of a salt gland on an image of a seagull to demonstrate where they are located. Another category of adaptations is morphological adaptations. The most important morphological adaptation for water regulation is skin. We have created a small table to compare the skin of different terrestrial animals. Some organisms have skin that has adapted to reduce water loss. Arthropods secrete a cuticle from epithelial cells in their skin. The cuticle is composed of protein and chitin. Land arthropods, such as insects, have a waxy, water-resistant layer covering the cuticle called the epicuticle. The main function of the cuticle is to minimize lo water loss through the skin. On the other hand, terrestrial amphibians do not have skin that is perfectly adapted to terrestrial life, as water is able to flow bidirectionally through their skin. To face the threat of dehydration in a terrestrial environment, some species form a cocoon of many layers of dead skin in order to reduce water loss in dry seasons. Mammalian skin is mostly resistant to water loss with the environment, as water can only leave through sweat glands. The last category of adaptations is behavioral adaptations. For example, some frogs can reduce rates of evaporative water loss significantly by changing their posture in response to decreased amount of water availability. Some animals, such as deer mice, will enter periods of torpor during drought to reduce evaporative water loss. Other animals will adapt their diet to minimize water loss. Kangaroo rats are a nocturnal species who feed on seeds and have adapted to choose seeds higher in carbohydrates rather than fat as it takes up less water to metabolize carbohydrates than it does fat. The availability of water not only affects animals on an individual level,
but can also have a great effect on the presence of animals in an area completely. A great number of animals can be observed in areas where there is an abundance of fresh water available. For example, the tropical rainforest biome, characterized by large amounts of precipitation, is one of the most successful biomes in terms of diversity of species. There is an ever-growing body of knowledge surrounding a changing global climate. Earth's surface temperatures are rising, with 2016 being the warmest year ever recorded. Terrestrial animals must adapt to deal with increasing evaporative water loss from increased temperatures. Some large mammals in arid climates, such as camels and kudus, abandon homeothermy while in states of heat and water stress in order to minimize water loss through evaporation by allowing their body temperatures to increase during the day. So why is water regulation important? Water regulation is vital to all life on Earth. In fact, the human body is made up of about 70% water. Water is involved in many physiological functions of terrestrial animals, such as temperature regulation through evaporation, transportation of nutrients and ions throughout the body, hydrolysis, and ATP production. Therefore, it is important to study and understand water regulation.